G'day Eagles fans, welcome to Ask Simo, presented by ECU. It's the fans' chance to ask the questions each week, and the winner, which Simo selects, will win a Superstore voucher, and he's pretty pumped up with that. Our first question is from Frank Matera on Facebook. That's right, Frank Matera, and I think he is related. Frank asks, why has the art of shepherding to buy space for a teammate almost completely gone out of the game? It seems players prefer running ahead to receive the ball after handballing instead of blocking for space. That's a specific question, isn't it? Um... I think what happens uh, about three or four years ago, I think um, a bit of a roundabout rule that most people in front of the play, because it was such a tight bubble of space, you know, everyone was on top of each other. So if you won the ball, everyone in front just run, stretch, stretch for length. And I think a lot of teams do that and hopefully you can hedge and draw rather than shepherd. So yeah, I reckon that, 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 um, that jumped into the game once it got real tight. So with the game opening up a little bit more, might be a bit more room for some shepherds. Pretty knowledgeable man, I think, is Frank Matera. Now, our next question is from Chris Dubois Marche. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, Dubois Marche, okay. when you put it all together. With Vardy having limited impact, I think he means Nathan, and Oscar Allen too valuable up forward to play in the ruck, would you consider using a tall midfielder to, to spell Nick Nat like Richmond have done in recent times with Marlon Pickett and P.S.? This is not a Chris Scott burner account ahead of the weekend. <laughs> um, uh, I thought on the weekend, uh, and, and sometimes you can only, I've said this, I think, a few questions a few weeks ago, sometimes we've got roles with our players that don't really get acknowledged with um, watching on TV or even going to the ground. So I, I thought Vard's ruck work was really good on the weekend. I, I think he's been building towards being a better ruckman. The next step for him is to have presence forward. So. When we got Vardy over from Geelong years and years ago, he was a really good forward for us. So he's working on that craft. And uh, if he can get that right, I think um, we'll see a bit more out of him. Still to come, you've got to find the Superstore winner as well. Now, Candice on Twitter, and I like this one because you were at the game on the weekend. How is Luke Edwards coming along? And do you think he'll get a debut game soon? Really happy with the kids we drafted. Um, they're doing it tough at the Waffle Eagles. We're, our top up players are uh, from the amateurs and they're having a crack. They're playing with plenty of spirit, but they're just not quite up to the standard uh, of the waffle sides. And look, the kids we drafted, you know, Winders obviously played already, uh, Zane True uh, and Lukey Edwards, they're the three kids that, you know, we, we picked up. They're all midfielders and they're getting a really good look at waffle level. So the pleasing thing is that none of them look out of place. And um, I think a couple of them got to go pre-season game. And they looked pretty sharp then as well. So Luke was crook at the time, so he didn't get to play that pre-season game. But I don't think he's going to have a problem lifting another level. Just when. Good stuff. Grant First at on Facebook asks, what is the most stressful and the most rewarding part of coaching? Uh, I reckon... <laughs> Getting a park at Bassendean Oval. <laughs> no, that was easy. Uh, you just drove straight to the front door, apparently. Oh, well, my face there's, is my you know, badge. there's no valet parking at Bassendean. <laughs> Anyway, um, I I think the pre-game, um, you know, when you you think you've done the work and then you, you question whether I have done the right, if I directed the players the right way, pre-game speeches are pretty pretty standard. Um, but I, I suppose that's the the most anxious you get is pre-game, and then um, when you win, it's just relief, and when you when you lose, it's um, yeah, you want to try and stay consistent. So that's the challenge. When you win or lose, can you stay the same? Good question. Now, Zach on Twitter says, how do you help midfielders like Xavier O'Neill to adjust to AFL level without moving them out of position? Yeah, well, he's a good one. He's an inside mid that, um, you know, he plays at Waffle, he'll get 30 possessions and real confident and, you know, he uh, feels like he's in his element. Comes to AFL and, you know, it's a bit harder. He struggles a bit more and being as consistent, that's the next step. So first step is he's, he's got to a point where he's almost too good for Waffle level. Um, no disrespect to the Waffle players, but he's at that AFL standard. Getting him to repeat that um, game day at AFL level is, is the next step for him. Is that something that Josh Rotham's started to find out, that he feels more confident about being in that, that 18, that starting 18, than he did when he was in and out of the side? Yeah, well, he's a great example of how to have an apprenticeship at AFL level. He was playing Waffle reserves when he first started. Probably played 50 games of Waffle footy. And gradually he's earned respect amongst his peers, but he's also a little bit more confident at, at AFL level. So that's taken three or four years. So Xavier O'Neill, unfortunately, like a lot of our young guys, missed out on Waffle footy last year. And that's a big part of development. So he's probably played 12 Waffle games, you know, not even. So yeah, more games under his belt, more confidence, a bit of game sense, game awareness. That's the next step for him. 
This is probably the most serious question of the lot and the one that requires it's a lot of attention. It's been serious today. No, it's been, it has been serious. Well, it's gone fact, deep. I don't know where these people, you know... Well, they're invested. They're, they're too invested. I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to ask this one. Vichy says on Twitter, Simo, a really important question, does pineapple belong on pizza? <laughs> Finish with That's a bang. That's more like it. Uh, of course it does. You can put anything on pizza. Except green stuff. I don't have salad and stuff. Rocket. Oh, yeah, you know, get the gourmet stuff going. So you, you look, you're in You're in for the pineapple? I'm in for the pineapple. <laughs> nice work by you. All righty. Who wins the question of the week, Simo? Well, the, the Vardy question, I didn't answer it fully because I think the, the guy or the girl asked about... Um, who was it asked the Vardy Yeah, that was... You're stitching me up. It was Chris Dubomarche. <laughs> um, uh, to finish the question off, rucking a tall midfielder, um, we haven't really gone down that path. Uh, it's probably because Nick spends too much time off the ground, it'd be 50 minutes, whereas if you've got a ruckman that can ruck almost all day and just pinch hit. So I think that uh, rounded off the answer and I think that was the best question. Nice work by you. Good luck on the weekend. Congrats. There you go, Chris. You've won a team store voucher and lots of great merch at our superstore at Mineral Resources Park. This has been Ask Simo. Thanks to ECU.